let's create an advanced item in Minecraft. All right, we find ourselves back in Challenger once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom advanced item to Minecraft. Now, what I call an advanced item is simply an item with its own Java class. This allows you to add a bunch of functionality to it. And let's just see how this is going to work. So in our item package, we're going to right click a new package called custom. And then inside of there, we're going to right click new Java class. And this is going to be the eight ball item. What I always suggest you do is you end the item class name with the word item, just so that it's absolutely clear that this actually is indeed an item class. And this will extend the item class over here from net Minecraft world item. If this turns red, then what you can do is you can just press Alt and Enter to import it. Once again, making sure that you choose the correct class. And this error always appears. You just hover over it, create constructor matching super, and then the constructor has been created. If this P over here annoys you, that's no worries at all. This is because we don't have the proper parchment mappings yet. You can just click on it, press Shift F6, and then usually it suggests something you know, proper to us. So we can just click on it, autocomplete with tab, and then it actually all looks a lot nicer. Now, how can we actually add functionality to this item? Well, the first thing we can do is we can middle mouse button click on this particular item class over here, and we can then see the implementation of the entire item class. So you can see all sorts of different methods that we can now override in its derivative class being the eight ball item over here. And we can basically find all sorts of things. So very interesting for us is for example, the use method, the use on method. Those are two very interesting ones. And there's also a bunch more. I highly suggest just going through this, taking a look at all of those methods. Basically, most of the time, the names of the methods pretty much pretty well describe actually what the different method is and what it does. And there even is an interface over here that is the ice forge item i can also middle mouse button click on this and here are even more different methods that you can override that are important for certain things so for example here makes piglins neutral you even have some java doc over here so basically you can see everything here is overridable and you can basically add certain functionality to your item by overriding those methods so what do we want to do? Well, we want to override the use method. So we're just going to type use and you can see it's already suggesting this to us. So I can just hit the tab key and it will autocomplete everything. So the first thing that we will do is because the parameters here are unmapped currently, what we'll do is we'll click on it and then we'll press the once again, shift F6 and just change it to, you know, the proper name. Basically, it's going to take the name of whatever the class is here, but that's going to be fine here. We're actually going to choose hand and that is going to make this just look a lot nicer and you're going to be able to follow this along way easier. So the question comes in, what do we want to have happen when we right click with this particular item in hand? Well, what we want is we want to just output a random number between zero and 10. That is all I really want to do. And the first thing that is very important this is the first lesson, so to speak, is I actually want this to only happen on the server. And when we have this particular item in the right hand. Now, why is that the case? You know, why would this need to be the thing? The reason is that usually if you want things to happen, you want them to happen on the server and some things like just the rendering and certain visuals, those are just on the client. So this is why this is kind of important. You can also think of it like this. If you were to have a Minecraft server and you would just let anyone on there, what would you not want them to be able to do without the server sort of verifying it? Obviously things like spawning items, spawning entities, spawning lightnings, you know, all sorts of those things should always happen on the server because that is what the server is responsible for. So how do we do this? Well, we're just making an if statement here and then putting in the exclamation mark to say level is client. So this, so this of course simply means that we're negating is client. So we only want to be on the server and we also want the hand parameter to be equal to interaction hand main hand over here so that it only happens when we actually have this item in our main hand. Now what we want is we want to then output a random number, let's say, and then also set a cooldown. So I just added these comments over here just so that it's a little more clear what we want to do because I actually wanted to add two private methods over here. This is just going to be a little bit of a more clean way to code it. Yes, we could also write all of this inside of the actual method here, but it just makes a lot of sense to have this properly done. So first of all, we want to make a private int and that is the get random number method over here and here we're just going to return random source that we're going to do the create new thread local instance actually that next int 
and then we're going to pass into it the upper bound and that's going to be 10. So this is going to make a number between 0 and 9. And then we're going to make another private method and that's going to be the private void output random number over here. It's actually going to take in a player over there as well as a parameter. And then we're going to have the player dot send system message with component dot literal over here. And we're just going to say your number is and then we're going to say get random number. And that is all we need to do. So to output the number, we now call the output random number and pass in the player. And then to set the cooldown, that actually works the following way. We're just going to say player dot get cooldowns dot add cooldown. We're going to pass in this as the first parameter and then the number of ticks that this cooldown should last. In this case, it's going to be 20 ticks. So it's going to have a cooldown of one second. And that is actually all of the things that we need to do in this class. Now, very important, please note the following. This name is currently grayed out, as you can see, meaning that this class has not been used because we have not registered any item. So if you were to go into the game, of course, no item has been added because the item was not added in the mod items class. So we need to do this as well. So let's just duplicate the raw zircon and let's just do the eight underscore ball over here. And then the same right here, right? Eight underscore ball for the name, making sure that we change this. And then this is incredibly important. We want to change the new item here over to new eight ball item. So you can see, once again, I'm going to do this one more time. This new item over here has to change to new eight ball item. You can see suggesting us net count and draw tutorial mod item custom. And this is the one we want. If we now change back to the eight ball item class, you can see the name of the class turned white and the constructor turned yellow. Now you know that this is being used and this is exactly right because of course it has to be used. Otherwise we are not creating a new eight ball item. We're just, we would just be creating a new item. We also want this to be stacks to one so that you can only stack one of those items together. Now, just like any other item, we also need the translation and the the item model file and all of that craziness. So we're just going to add this as well, eight ball right here. And then we're just going to call this the eight ball as well. And then I will just copy over the item model JSON file. Nothing crazy going on here. It just points to a texture. And we'll of course also download the texture. Now all of this, including the code and everything is of course going to be available to you in the description below. GitHub repository an individual just as well. But those are all of the steps that we need to do to actually get a custom advanced item into our game. So let's join Minecraft and see if it works. All right, so we find ourselves in Minecraft again, and there we go, the eight ball has been added. And if I right click it, you can see your number is five, your number is zero, and I can keep right clicking and I'm gonna keep getting a new number over here. So you can see, I'm just getting a random number, but yeah, that is pretty much how it works. And you can see that the cooldown is also added, so I can't like keep spamming it. I, you know, I can only click it and then I have to wait a second until the cooldown is done. And you can also see it's not going to work in the offhand. It only works in the main hand. So that is how easy it can be to add a custom advanced item to Minecraft. Right, that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. And I'll see you all in the next tutorial. So, yeah.